recording now. So hopefully that should be all recording now. So, okay, so I'm just gonna go through uh, the last stages of the rig because um, a lot of you are having issues with, um, with the rigging and understanding what's happening under the hood. Um, uh, let me see, where can I start with my files? Let me see the date, I think the date I could probably. Trying to see where I can find it. Okay, 2020. I think we were in one somewhere like this. Now, okay, can everybody see this? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good, guys. L listen, w when you are in this stage, guys, if you want to make changes, something that I asked quite a few people had that issue last week, what? If you find that you want to change your character by any chance you decide well i think this guy is too low whatever and you want to do that or you want to come here and then do this don't do that guys because you mess up the whole character this is a recipe for disaster if you find the whole point of going with this uh, with this uh workflow is that you're going to go back and forward constantly okay and the thing is you will check things like this even though i don't have a, a, a white paints here i can check things like this like for example the knee sort of behave okay Everything seems to be all right. I say, well, this hip is too high, it's too low, it's too out, it's too in. I, I'm, by mistake, I broke the line that I talked about. Or by mistake, I broke this line from the front view. Whatever. If you have issues like that, and you say, well, I'm going to go and change it all, and you start moving this, you will mess up your whole thing. And you will not know what's going on. And the, the thing you have to do in the workflow is that you have to go back from, the, from here, from the actual... Um, uh, a script, okay, the actual plugin, because you know that the first thing we need to do is just import this guy, and it goes by step. Look, step one, the prep work, all the stuff that we did before, we imported the thing in the in the reference, and then the fitting of the body, you will import this, and then you will start putting things together, and then you will add the labels, the bendy things, the in between, all the things that we talked about here. If you want to create as well add joints, you can add the joint click here, and then we'll start adding the joints. You can do it as well through here, through the actual. Um, skinning pro oh, sorry the skeleton to create this you can see this icon is exactly the same as this it's just that it's all being encapsulated in a single sort of tab here for you to go step by step to make things easier okay now if you want to make changes do not make the change here guys because that's it you you mess i guarantee you will mess your rig and you will know what's going on you want to do that you have to always make sure that you do this you toggle here you want to make the change you you are in this situation you rebuild you test you like the way they form. You like the position of the joints where they're going to be deforming. You don't see anything funny with the knees or the elbows or something like that. Then you say, well, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just commit to this and I'm just going to uh, rig it and then I continue doing the paint weight. For example, like one other thing that you need to look for is the, is the knee thing, you know, that I talked about, the, the, the knee works. For example, if you by any chance want to make a change on the knee, then you go back here. You click this button, you do the change, you make sure you are in fit mode, it's very important when we talk about the fit mode. But the fit mode, what it does is every time, for example, in the fit mode, what it does is this. Every time I move this, for example, I press D, look at this little, this little um, axis in here. Look, this little axis that is sort of built in inside the, um, the, the joint. If I make a, a, some, something like a move, for example, look how it rearranges itself when the fit mode is on. If I do this, you see how it rearranges itself? Look at this. You can probably see it here better. If you do this, look. Not like that. Oops. Press D. And you do that. You see how it rearranges itself? That is what the fit modes are. So every time you do that, it will freeze the transformation in whatever you did here, clear out, and make everything pointed down the axis. And this, this fit mode, what it does is automatically in the background runs two things. Runs the freeze transformation and runs this little, this little tool called the orient joints. Make sure that the joints are ori orienting in the right direction. And, th and that's all what it does is. If you forget to do this, that's fine. You say, oh my god, I did all this stuff, but I, it's all in the right place, but I forgot to do the fit mode. That's fine. Just click this button. Update, man, update now. When you do that, it runs it automatically for you. And then you hit this button to rebuild. Okay? Do not have this without a fit mode because again, 
It's gonna bring rotations and things in here that when you rig, that's gonna buy you in the ass later on. Like for example, if you put this stuff too straight, like, I don't know, let's say that you do this, by any chance you do this, which is wrong, okay? And if you build this up, You see, and I think some of you have this issue that the, the control of the knees were backwards. And you see that's, that's something wrong. Okay, so you, you, you test it and say, well, you see the legs are bending backward because I put this stuff to the back and it creates this imaginary sort of triangle here thinking that, okay, if that is a triangle, it means that the knees are going to be at the back and then it's going to be bending backwards. So you know that that's wrong. So you might be tempted to go here and press D and then fix them individually but it will not work. What you have to do again is go here, and then from here, you take this, you rebuild it, put it at the front, the way it should be. Make sure the fit mouse is on. Look what happened once fit mouse is on. You see how this rearrange itself, and then you hit rebuild, okay? So my point is, if you wanna make changes after you've done this, please do not do it once you have this, all these controls in the viewport because you are committed to it already. Once you do that, you cannot, do, you cannot go back and make changes. You need to go back to the fitting mode, like the toggle fitting mode, which is, you see, once I fix that, then you see I got the knees in the right place now. And that could happen as well with the elbows or the spine or whatever. And this is what I mean to you guys, do not break the line like this, this line in the front, you can break it like this because it will be telling you where the knees are gonna be bending. The same with this, do not break the line in the front view like this, but you can break it from the side view because that's how the elbows are, okay? This one, I don't think you can break it because these guys by default inside, they have this uh, lock. If you go here, you can see that this guy has the translation in Z lock automatically because it's a spine, which means that it hasn't got symmetry. It's something that goes right in the middle. And that's why these guys as well has it, you see. This has to translate Z block, all of them, okay? And because that, then it will say, oh, okay, that guy doesn't need, um, doesn't need um, uh, mirrors, okay? So it's just gonna be something that goes right in the middle, like a tail or whatever, okay? Again, you build this guy, okay? You select the joints that you need. And what I mean is you select the joints is by hitting this button, select the form joints, okay? What this what this does is selects all the joints that you're going to bind to the skin automatically. This is a button for all that. Let's say that that's what you want now. You hit this button and this is selected, okay? I saw some of you last week and they they were, when they were doing this because they were following my tutorial or they weren't skipping or something, no paying attention. The fact that this is selected like this, it doesn't mean that it's actually selected. You click here, you click here, and here, and you can see that that is actually what is selected, the one that is darker blue or brighter blue. The one that are dim, it means that, hey, something within this group is selected. In this case, the joints, okay? And by default, it selects all the joints that the rig is going to bind. And then you shift select the skin, and then you do the binding thing that we talked about. And then you have to do it for the eye, you have to do it for the ponytail, and you have to do it for the, for the, uh, here, for this section, the cape, okay? If for some reason sometime, and I mentioned, the jaw is not connected, you can add it by, once you have the rig, once you have the actual skin class, you select the jaw, select the skin, and then you actually go into skin, and then you add that influence. Make sure that this is off, use geometry. And that automatically will be added to the list, and then you will be able to paint that. Sometimes it does it, this one doesn't do it, okay? You can select them from here, but if you feel that they're not selected, you can double check. There is a way to double check this. And you can use one of these old um, uh, editors. I think it's called the hierarchy, hierarchy I think it's called. Um, I think it's uh, attribute, hypergraph, sorry. The hypergraph, the uh, hierarchy. You click here, this will pop up. This is very old, this thing, I still use. But you can see here, when you zoom out, you can see in a sort of hierarchical way what is selected and what is uh, is going to be. For some reason, this is. You see this? Where are? You? Okay, there you are. Because this stuff is within some modules that you can see here. 
what other stuff that you got selected okay and by default it selects the roots doesn't select the ends the ends are not necessary for binding the roots spine rib cage you see the rib cage here wasn't selected you probably need to add it later on by what I did you select it and then you add it or you can just press shift here and then add it to the list okay you don't need the fingers the end fingers because this is just the end finger four which is the tip we don't need that nothing spin from the tip of the finger only the knuckle before which is number three for all the fingers and here the eyes were not added because we don't need to add it to that that's good the jaw wasn't added you press shift and you add it to this one okay if you want to the one you see the head end doesn't not select it because it's not needed the end ones are not needed they selected everything else except the last joint for some reason by default doesn't select the last joint and i think that probably is okay if that's what you want if you want to add it you can add it you press shift and you add it the eyes we don't need it the end fingers and the other left side of the rib cage wasn't added and then once you have that then you have a true um a joint selection and again if for some reason some of them are missing doesn't matter you can just go individual select and select the mesh and then go into skin add influence and then you add it to the list okay and then you should select this and then you will have everything that is needed to select for that specific skin okay my advice is for things like the eyes only select what you need you select left eye right eye and then select the eye geometry and then you bind it there's no point of having all this joints that no we're gonna be got nothing to do with the eyes same with the cape we did that last week I think we selected shoulder chest and clavicle and that will be enough for us okay that's something you have to do throughout the cape as well like I said you're going to throw the whole process again you can see by by default here for some reason doesn't select all the joints when you select it here you see it misses some of them like the rib cage because the rib cage is something that we didn't do a standard with it the jaw should be standard because the jaw is part of the actual rig and I think it doesn't do it because I think the jaw is later done with the face rig with the face section here which we we're not going to touch that face information because um, we're not going to do that it's too much it's just it's just it's another course on its own so we don't want to do that but you can see you can shift select this using the hypergraph the hierarchy then you can shift select the joint that you actually are missing from this you can analyze it and see like I said you missed the rib cage you miss the jaw, you can add them here, and then she select the geometry and then you bind the skin. And that will be the binding. Then it comes the process of painting that you have to go and paint the skin based on the technique that I've shown you before, which was painting going in a hierarchical way. You start, you paint everything down from here to the to the shoulder, and then you paint from here down to the rib, to the elbow, and then from here down to the wrist and to the sort of twist here. And then from here down all to the wrist and then you start finger down 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 before you know it, it's all painted and all that you have to go and smooth them to make sure that the formation is good you can individually select these controls and then rotating and see how they behave and then all you have to do is put them back the way it was and i'll show you how to do that in a second but once you have that and painted then you publish this um uh section uh, which is the publishing i think it's i think it's called where is that Point, the point, the point, the geometry partial, you publish. You just go through these ones if you want. Build the post is quite important, but then publish. Once you publish that, and it, it explains here what it does, then you're gonna create a single file that has the actual rig. That will be pretty much, and I think I mentioned it that last week, is that at the moment we know that this guy is a reference, and we know that because the model here is got this little diamond, blue diamond here, which means it is a reference. You can double check by going into the reference editor and then here you can see that that stuff is a reference okay and by that being a reference it means that uh, the file or this geometry here is not actually in the scene it's only been pointing to a location in disk where this actual model is if you forgot to do um, UVs or something like that you can go back to that model do the UVs delete all the history do not change change the naming or do not change the actual number of um, geometry or change the location or anything like that because that will mess everything up in here then once you have that then you bring it in here okay and then if you save that they automatically be cascaded back into this rig 
And then now the final step, which is publishing, what it does is break this connection, okay? It gets rid of the, of the, of the, of this, and then keeps everything in a single file, because what you're gonna do afterwards is, at the moment you got the model, which you are referencing to a rig, and then when you publish it, you publish just a single file that has everything but without this reference. You break this reference. Which means that when you're gonna animate, you're actually going to create a reference of this rig, this one. Okay, and that's the one you're gonna start animating. Because if we don't do that, then you're gonna go and reference this file that is the final, which at the same time is referencing another file, which is the model. And then you will have nested references, and those nested references add more overhead to the system because every time you do a save you have to save the original file you have to save the reference which is the rig but at the same time that rig has another reference which you want to save as well and sometimes it, it just brings you trouble so it's better just to break that by following the publish button which break that connection and once you do that then you are ready to start animating okay and that is pretty much how you're gonna you're gonna be working on that on that now once you do that and you hold the rig, just remember that when we did the publish, I told you to do one thing, which was taking this fold, this this file, this uh, group, take it out, middle click and drag, and take it out, and then you publish. Because if you keep this guy the way it was, you will that when you import stuff in set in, in Maya, sorry, in Unreal, it will not work, guys. So please do not forget this step. If you forget that step, you are you can still go back and fix that issue and then do the referencing and that should work but it could it could give you a little bit of trouble because you need to export things out okay now once you have this okay you will have the file which is the finalized which is I think let me let me check which is the file that it I'm gonna open one of the animation that I already have and I'm gonna check which is the file that I'm referencing because I can't remember the name so I'm gonna open the idle final and I'm gonna double check the reference okay so I think file this guy is referencing one file which is step 9 final rig okay so I'm gonna open that file step 9 final rig so trying to rename it like that so you know. Okay. Okay, final rig here you can see there is no reference like that because when you hit the publish button, it will break that and it will pretty much put it all together here. So all the geometry is here with the way it should be. And I think what it does, it takes this and it says, I think you can you can go here into modify. And I think in, in here you go away to convert. You can convert there's a way to convert reference to geometry, I think it is, or reference to... Maybe it must be here in the reference editor, you, you have ability to create a reference. I don't know how it does it, but it's, it's done anyway on, underneath. So so pretty much you can see that the, the little diamond is not there anymore, which means that this file has not been referenced somewhere else. It's just everything is self-contained. The deformation system, which is this, is outside the way it should be. The rig is working. And now when you want to animate, then you're going to reference this file. Okay, this is the, the file that you're going to reference. Okay, because before when we were rigging and we hit the before we hit the publish button, we had this stuff outside that we talked about. This stuff, this file was referencing another file, which was the actual model. That's where you could see the diamond here. Now it's gone. Now we only have to reference one file, and this file here is already all up and running, and it has all the. Um, the rig uh, the way it should work so you have you have the connected smoothing so everything looks smooth it's been paint uh, the way paint has been correct it's been done properly it takes a little bit of time but you can have here and then you can just shift to this side and then you can just you can see that the information is okay okay it preserves the volume in, in, in the rib cage fairly good there is a little bit of movement here it's all painted it's all fine okay now before you commit to this you have to make sure that this stuff is up up just as it is you have to be clear that no uh, rotation or anything like that because otherwise when you start the animation the model will be like this you don't want that okay 
So, which brings me to the next point, which is that little uh, white button here, which is that little uh, UI, which is the uh, character pickup. And what it does, this is just something you're going to be do using, guys, when you are animating, because this is the one that allows you to pretty much, uh, instead of finding the control, you can select it from here. For example, if you want to select this control here, you can just click on this here. You see it's selected, and it's easier for you to access it instead of finding it. It's another way to pretty much select stuff in the viewport, okay? You click here, it selects all the controls that are animatable. You click here, for example, it selects the, it selects the hand. I think this is the wrist, or this is an extra imaginary one. This is something, yeah. So that's because it wasn't, okay, let me see here. You click this, put it back in there, okay? So you can select everything with this. You can reset them. You can select only the fingers. You click here, you see only select the fingers. So you can do things like this, okay? You can curl uh, the fingers individually, okay? Uh, you can select things like this. You can select um, controls, individual controls. This is the IK, but at the moment it's not visible because it's not visible. See? If you click here, the red ones are the IK, okay? This is the, oh, this is the uh, elbow control. You see, and this is the switch. Okay, this is the switch between the IK and FK. I mentioned that FK is when you can m rotate the, the things individually, the controls or the joints individually, one per one by one by one. And the IK is when you can actually um, this is a switch. You can actually move this to number 10 and it will give you a switch. And then here you can just actually move everything in one go with only two control, the control for the wrist and the control for the elbow, okay? If you want to reset the character uh, how it was before you start animating, you go here into pose and you hit this button reset, okay? And this is quite good as well because you can, for example, here, you can mirror and copy things. You click the button mirror on the options you can, for example, if I do this when you're animating and I put this character like, I don't know, here and you want to mirror to the other side, you can say, um, I'm going to use the uh, X axis to mirror and you're going to mirror left to right. So whatever's on the left, you're going to go into the right. So you click this and it does it. Look. So I mirror thing. You don't have to go and make sure that it type exactly so it does the things the way it should be, okay? So you can, let's reset it again. Uh, there's more other stuff here for baking animation, clean, copy keys. I hardly use this because we're gonna be using very basic animation. So you can have things like dynamic and stuff like that, but we don't wanna cover that because it's more advanced and we don't wanna, we're gonna put stuff in Unreal so it should be fine. <coughs> so you can control the selectors. For example, if you have something that is selected and you say, I wanna um, swap them, just hit swap. I'm gonna swap this to this side and then the vice versa. Based on the control, there are only the control selected, and you do that. Suppose it doesn't wanna work. Okay, left to right, swap. Doesn't wanna work. That's it. Probably crash. Did it crash? It doesn't wanna do it for some reason. Let me look into that. Oh yeah, it did, and now it wants to do it. Yeah, it took some time. So yeah, it did it there. Don't know why it did it straight away. I don't know why. Anyway, so but it did it all about it, all of them did it, not the selected ones. I don't know why. But anyway, so uh, you reset this, and this is the way it should be. This is the way it was when we bind bound the skin. So you should, before you start animating, go into this final file, which is gonna be the final rig. Okay, but why did I do that? Where my egg went, man? this there you go so uh yeah so <clears throat> i'm gonna close this uh this is the way it should be left before you start animating okay not other way because uh the uh you need to start from everything zero you can see that all these controls are zero like the initial okay that's it there's nothing the animation is going to start from here so guys, when you finish your rig, please get familiarized with every single one of these controls too, so you know when you're animating, when you, what are they capable of. For example, this one does the roll like this, and then here does the, uh, the tip like that, or the toes, 
this one like here I think that's the banking of the rotation of the oh it's not banking, yes rotation of this uh, this one here I think that's the foot roll you can see so you can do that so all this control you need to get familiarized with and now the only way to do it is just uh, playing with them so this one here is the hips I think hip sway so you can do this um, this one does the actual movement of the whole upper body with the feet planted um, these are the, the switches so the moment these are in FK mode you can switch into IK and you will have only three controls and you can do things like squash and stretch I think it's automatic and then you can just uh, control these guys like this so you can create some crazy uh, stuff and then as well this you can see you can stretch your the upper and lower bodies a bit more cartoony but we don't want to need them so um, again you go and pose reset and everything goes back the way it should be okay this is how you should have your character and this one is the control is for the eyes so you can see that the eyes get twisted around you can let me hide it join one second so you can see that look okay um, these things are for moving the eyes if you want to move them and you want to rotate this one rotates no it doesn't rotate yeah this one rotates individually I mean again we're not gonna be doing uh, facial animation so you shouldn't be worried about it that should be fine it should be enough and then you have the control as well for every single one of these and you have the control as well that I put for the IK so I have the ability to animate this if I want to in an FK mode IK mode sorry and uh, again you can go here and make reset them and everything is back to the way it works okay there is no control for the cape in this in this uh, rig because we are not going to animate the rig only the uh, sorry we're not going to animate the cape the cape will come along and it's only going to be attached the whole thing is attached to three joints and when you animate this this stuff is going to be stiff that's fine as soon as we bring it into unreal then you turn it into cloth and it will be dynamic and you tell them the, the, the same way you painted the weights in the character you're going to paint weights in unreal saying hey this stuff is going to be attached to whatever it came as it came from the rig and then from this point down we're going to paint the dynamic and everything is then going to be controlled by the dynamic system inside unreal and that's it it's pretty simple it will take no more than five ten minutes okay so once you have this then you're ready so you go to your final rig and you're going to start animating Okay, if you want to start animating, the first thing you need to do is you need to actually reference this final rig. Okay, and then I'm going to create a fresh scene. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say fresh scene, file, reference editor. I'm going to add a reference. I think this is the button, create reference. And I'm going to create a reference to that final rig that was published, all done, final rig. Reference, continue. And then here I have a rig already in place. You can see, and this is all these diamond things means that that stuff is being referenced on some, some place. If you start animating here and you realize that you have a serious problem with your rig, then what you have to do is do not go and chain this one that we just did because that's already being sort of finalized. What you can do is go back to the step before you publish, do the fixes there by going into the stuff that we did edit the build a toggle do all the fixes paint the ways all that you publish a new copy of that guy and if you the character is exactly the same you have all the control and everything is exactly the same what you can do is you can say okay I got my animation down here but this is the this is referencing the old rig you go here file reference editor and then you find the new reference here by creating you can probably say reference and you can say here create or edit reference I think it's called file reload I think this one here. replace reference and then you, you tell you okay which is the new published file and you publish the new file and then voila you get a new and then you shouldn't be able to lose your animation and that's the whole advantage of having this uh, workflow with references that if you do animation and you realize that something is really wrong then you can just go back before you publish that one you go back and then you uh, create a new rig with the fixes and then you come here and you replace that rig the old rig here with that new rig and then because the controls are all the same 
and should be all named the same. You say, that's fine, I didn't lose any information. It does, it's just create a reference and then you can continue animating and then you, s you don't lose your work. If we don't do that, then if you forget to do the, this step, which is the referencing, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose all your animation because it's gonna, all, everything is fixed inside the rig here which is pretty much what you did, you took the last rig, you saved it, and then you start animating directly on the rig without doing the reference, okay? And that's what's gonna happen if you do that. So again, once you have this, then you're gonna save this, and you save it here, and I'm gonna call this week, I don't know, seven test animation, okay? And I call this 001, then save it, okay? Once I save that, I think it didn't save with a file format. I don't know why that might happen sometimes. Save it, see us. Save it, save okay, saved it, that's fine. It did, for some reason, it didn't have the MA file. Sometimes, I don't know why that's fine. And then sometimes you open the file and it has a .001 or whatever. Week seven test and in, yeah. Make sure you put 001 and 002 and 003 and all that, okay? So, once you have this, then remember that this is all reference, okay? And, and then you start animating. I think here you can just open the UI that we talked about and then you start doing the animation, okay? Now the animation here is, um, is, pretty, is, uh, is pretty simple. It's pretty much using uh, references, okay? I don't want to go through the references now because that's something we're going to start covering next week with the idle, the idle, and we're going to do the walk cycle and all that, and then I'm going to show you what I do normally to make things a little bit um, smooth and um, so that 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 should be that should be uh, that should be okay, right? So uh, don't worry about that. Um, you click. Uh, uh, sorry, I just lost track of the thoughts. I just be tired today, sorry guys. Um, so, um, uh, I'm gonna go, yeah, okay, so this is gonna be mostly about the referencing, and then obviously uh, I'm gonna give you some ideas on where you can find reference, and I got some images in the project file that I'm gonna upload later on for next week, but from now on, you have to just, um, work on, uh, um, uh, of each of the animation at a time, you have the idle animation that we talked about, we have the walk cycle, we have the run cycle, we have the jump cycle, and uh, and then I'm gonna show you how to split all of them and how to put it together. Now, the stages that we're gonna be using in ZBrush, the, it has two stages, which is, uh, no, in ZBrush, sorry, uh, Unreal Engine, is two stages. One stage is the, um, the um, um, you're going to have to export the rig, the rig from Maya into Unreal and then the animation separately, one by one. Now, the first stage, which is actually the rig, all you have to export is the skin geometry and the joints. And that's why the joints need to be out here. Because if you, like here, like they are now, if you're living inside the way it was, which was underneath all this stuff here, Unreal get confused with all this grouping and it will not, it will, you, the, your character will be like facing, it doesn't recognize the automatic conversion of the Y and Z axis, it will be facing on his back, it will not work. I try to fix that issue, God knows how many, how many times I have until I manage to get it working. And that's the, the only way to do is this, taking that f uh, folder out, that sort of, that, that group out of the original and you, sh and that should, that fixes it. It's a quick fix, but it does it perfectly. The only thing is that the trade-off that, that you're gonna lose the ability to scale your character. And that's why I told you from the beginning, make sure that your character is scaled correctly, otherwise you will lose that feature later on to do it. And something as well in Unreal is not advisable to have scales as well in the rotation of the joint because it might not work correctly, but it's better to have everything correctly from the beginning. And as, as you know, in Unreal, scale is very important, okay? And you always do it when you're doing your, your um, scene as well. You have to have the right scale, the way things are too big or too small and it's not gonna work. Okay, so when you start animating, then you start working on this character and you start posing the character, doing whatever you wanna do, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Now, we're gonna start doing that next week, which is putting together all the, uh, the loops and, 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 and putting together the, the way you, you animate your character. 
Now, um, I'm going to go through that, like I said, with the idle, and then I'm going to go through that with the uh, walk cycle and a run cycle, you'll be able to do it one, or all of them. And then I'm going to show you how to do the export towards the end and then putting all together inside Unreal. Okay? I already have a tutorial for putting stuff inside Unreal to get all of it together from last year, which pretty much is the same, hasn't changed. So, um, but what I wanted to show you here is a little bit of um, uh, the aspect of how to animate inside um, or the elements that are involved inside the animations uh, section inside Maya. Now, when you want to animate, obviously you're going to have to sit, set keyframes in your character. Okay. Now, um, we can do it with this, or we can just uh, close this and create a fresh scene, and then I'm just going to just just do it with simple stuff. Okay. So I'm going to create a sphere. Okay, and then just gonna scale it up, and I think this is pretty much stuff that you, all of you, have seen one way or another. I mean, so when you want to animate in Maya, one of the things you need to keep an eye, and it's very important for this section because one of the first thing you need to do is um, first of all you need to make sure that um, you are working on 30 frames per second. So if you click here, this, you have to put the frame rate at 30 frames per second. That's the first thing you need to do, okay? So once you do that, you have to make sure that frame rate 30 frames per second because that's the, multi that's the stuff that you use in, in gaming these days, 30, 60, 90 frames per second. So you need to make sure that you have that in here in place. It's very important before you start animating. Otherwise, you're gonna start animating on something and you realize that's too slow or too fast because you were using the wrong frame rate, okay? Now, other thing as well that is very important is the playback speed. You have to make sure that you are playing a real time, 30 frames per second. Because if you play for every frame, for example, if you, I don't know, I'm gonna do quickly an animation here, and I'm gonna put it 150, and I'm just gonna move it there, and I'm gonna animate it, so this here, Okay, that is seems like okay, that's really fast, but that is because we're playing every frame. It's playing every frame as fast as the computer can process them, or as fast as the graphic card can do it. It's not taking into account that you want to play this stuff at 30 frames per second. So if you put that 30 frames per second, and now you play it, on this is the real time. So that stuff there that you saw going really fast, this is the real time. Now. In computer graphics, you have this section, uh, play every frame, and 30 frames per second is when you do things like simulation. When you do simulations, you play every frame. Because simulations need to calculate, for example, particle simulation, fluid simulation, and smoke simulation, and things like that. They always rely on the state of the data, the previous frame, before they can move on into the next frame and start accumulating and start accumulating and solving the whole um, process of the simulation and those can get really complex so when you do a simulation you leave this stuff in play every frame and then you cache it with some sort of caching in disk and then you play it and then you say 30 frames per second and then you will get the speed or I don't know of the explosion or the particles or whatever but when you're doing animation you need to make sure that you're actually animating in the frame rate that you're going to be delivering which is 30 frames per second if you leave it like that this is the wrong speed. You think that, oh, that's perfect. I'm gonna do the guy, car, character moving from here to here. And it's very snappy and it's really good. I like it, but then you forgot to do this. And then when you go here, you realize that actually the thing is really slow and the character looks like a massive joint, okay? So that is something that you need to take care of, okay? And but you need to make sure that you are playing on 30 frames per second. That's the first thing. Another thing as well that you notice is, and I think for those for you that have a good graphic card, and I think the majority of you have a good graphic card, is you need to make sure that everything that you have here, okay, is sort of cached in disk. When you see that blue screen here, that blue line, it means that it's been cached on the graphic card. And in order to do that, you need to make sure that you are, have settings in Maya that allows you to cache on disk, on, on the graphic card. For instance, if you go here, there is a section here that tells you where you can find that information. And I think it's in interface, no, display. No, here, this one, viewport display. You have to make sure that you are in DirectX. So it catch everything in DirectX. 
these ones will not give you that blue line and if you go that blue li don't, don't have that blue line there you're not really doing real the, you're not gonna get the speed in the viewport of the or the real speed of the character or whatever you animating if that happens then you're gonna have to do is every time you animate you have to right click here and then play blaster and then open up in the file when it pops out and you can see the actual real time of the all of the of the animation but pretty much these days all of this stuff should be real time remember look for this line this little line light blue line that goes here into the time slider that will tell you that everything is being cached on the on on the graphic card and it's actually when you play this it's actually playing on real time there's going to be some limitation and you have something that is so complex in the viewport with loads of controls and loads of animation keyframes and curves then this stuff would probably not gonna give you 100% the first pass. And what it does is just keep playing it, and you keep playing it, you keep playing it, you play it three, four times, these lines start getting populated and start getting blue, 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 more blue, and then before you know it, the whole thing is blue. And then when you play it, then you know that you are playing on 30 frames per second, okay? So this needs to be under XX, I believe. If you put in one of these, it will not work. And the other thing as well that helps with that and then i think it's not help it's part of the actual setup is i think in settings no in settings animation yeah sometimes the, the evaluation mode you need to put gpu override and you need to put this one in parallel or sometimes you have to put in serial i can't remember exactly which one they are but i think in parallel for me it works uh i don't remember having to change any of this all i know that if i don't have that blue line here it means that i'm not getting the real time of my animation and that's something you need to keep on eye, guys. It's very important. Because you can be animating a lot of stuff and you realize it actually looks really good. But when you bring it into Unreal, it's so slow, it's so fast. Then you will have to go back here and then fix those keys before you can export it. Okay? So, again, 30 frames per second. Play every frame. Uh, DirectX, play... Uh, what is it called? The animation. I don't remember what it is now. Is in times I think it's called uh, where was it? It's in no interface. Completely forgot what it was. I think it's in anim no animation. It's in settings animation in this section. I think it is no assets cache playback. This is the cache playback. It's telling you oh this one you need to have that tick as well. If you don't have that tick, you see how the line goes blue. Does disappear. You see, it's how you start playing it, and the lines start catching out. You see how that. This is a good example. Now you are in real time. Okay. And if you want to find out as well if the real time that you're playing as well is not correct, another thing. Let me go before I go. I'm gonna go to the one. The one I was before, which was time slider. Yeah. You have to make sure that it's 30 frames and 30 frames playback speed. If you want to find out as well that you're actually going at 30 frames per second, this will give you an idea. Uh, you have to go into wind, uh, display, hazard display, and you put here this one called frame rate. And you can see here, not no frame, but frame rate. Windows, hazard dis display, hazard display, you have to put no current frame, but frame rate. That's the one frame rate. You can see now we are playing 30 frames per second, and that is the real time. This ball, when you bring it into Unreal, that's how fast it's gonna go because I'm playing correctly. Okay. So again, look for those things: the cache geometry, the DirectX 11, and the I think you have to put the thing on parallel or serial. One of those two. I think parallel is the one. And as well, make sure that the cache geometry is on. And again, if you don't have the cache geometry, oops, no cache geometry, cache animation, cache playback. So you do that, you can see that it gives you here is not caching, here is caching. And you can see that this is not being cached in disk on memory, and then now everything is cached. Okay, very important. If you don't have that, then uh, you're going to have issues with your timing when you bring your animation. It's very important. Okay, so um, now when I talk about how to do the keyframe, you can see that I keyframe things here, and I'm going to show you what I did there. So I'm going to right click here and then just write the connection for now. So when you want to animate, you want to bring this stuff from 
whatever from point A to point B, then you're gonna create something called the curves. Okay, those animation curves are the one that I'm going to make sure that this character is going to be, or this thing is going to be moving up and down by using these manipulators and you keyframe and time, this position, and then you get that position in that specific time, that specific frame. Now, just remember that we're not going to be doing the character with this because the character is locked once you apply the, the skin cluster. All the, all the control is going to be taken care of by the actual uh, controls, okay? So if you let me go and open the file that I just did here. Okay, if I want to animate this, I'm gonna first I'm gonna put this in. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put in IK mode so I can have only one control to do it. So if I wanna animate this character that opens the arm from here to here, then I go to the first frame, okay? And with these controls, you have two ways to keep framing this, okay? If you press S, it will keep frame everything in the channel box that is keyable. And you will get this little highlight here with this red dot, means that you have a keyframe, okay? And you're creating some sort of connection in there, okay? So if you keyframe there, and then if you move to frame, I don't know, 60, and then if you move that up like this, and then you press S again, you can see how the blue line when you can say okay I'm catching everything on, on the graphic card so now when you go here that's the real time that's how fast this stuff move and you can tell here that it's playing at 24 frames per second now I left it at 24 frames per second but I need to go and change it to 30 so I have to put it back to 30 because that's the way we're gonna be working in Unreal 30 frames play 30 frames per second I'm gonna save that now when I play this I check this frame here so this is, this is how fast it's gonna go. So you can see now that before it was 60 frames, now are 75 frames, okay? So I'm moving this control from here, from here to here in this period of time, okay? And then by, when I press S, what I'm doing is keyframing everything, okay? So you can see here, I'm gonna perhaps and they break these connections again okay so again I'm gonna press S I'm gonna go into 80 or 60 or whatever 72 and I'm going to hit here and I'm gonna press S you can see how the line goes it means big cache in, hard in, the, in the graphic card and this is the speed this is the speed you can confirm by checking the frame right here and say yes this stuff is playing at 30 frames per second okay now this is the keyframe on frame 1, and this is the keyframe on frame 72. Okay, that's fine. Frame 72, frame 1. 72 frame. okay? Now, if I want to make this faster, obviously, I had to move the same distance from here to here in a shorter period of time. So what I have to do is I have to move this keyframe all the way here, or below 72 to make it fast. So how do you do that? You can just go in here, and then go into this frame and then keyframe that. But it doesn't work because every time I'm going into this keyframe and I go in here, it will only give me whatever is sort of interpolated between frame one and frame 72, okay? Where that position is. Now, how do I know how the interpolation works? And that's when the animation curves come in play, okay? So at the moment, I only do in one screen, but I can probably, uh, there is a workspace here in the Maya that you can use in, where you can have the actual, the animation curve visible. And that is, that editor is called the graph editor. <coughs> Sorry. If I click here, this will pop up. Okay, and this is the graph editor. Okay. And this is how the curves are interpolated. Okay. You can do that and have another screen. I recommend you do that. Or if you have a single screen, you can then go into the workspace and then look for the animation workspace. And by clicking there, I'm gonna close this. I have the curves automatically here by default. So I have the graph editor and the time editor, which is another editor for animation, in a single sort of doc uh, UI. Sorry. Um, so the graph editor 
tells me or represents how the curves are going to be interpolated in time and in space. Okay? Now, the way you read this is as follows. The, this axis, which is normally is the x-axis in, in a two-dimensional um, system, uh, is this here is time. So you go from frame 1 to frame 70. And you can click on this little red and you can move what is the position on 72 and what is the position on frame 1. Okay? 72, frame 1. Okay? So the interpolation is this curve. Okay? And these have three curves at the moment because these are like the three curves that have moved. The moment we only move translation because we didn't rotate it. If we want to introduce rotation, we can just click here. Okay? We press S again. Nothing happened because we keyframe everything. We go into 72 and I'm going to introduce a little bit of rotation, something like this. Like that. Okay? And I'm going to press S again because you can see that when they go like sort of pinkish, blue, pinkish light pink, then it means that, hey, this, this uh, channel has been changed, but they haven't been keyframed. You want to keyframe them. And if you want to keyframe everything, you, you know the key, which is S. You press S, and everything is keyframed. And you can see now that everything goes cached automatically. And then now everything goes back to red, which means that you have a keyframe there. So now when I move here, and I play it, now I have rotation as well. Okay? So I have rotation there. Okay? So I go that, and I go this, and then I don't have any more keyframes in there because the last keyframe recorded is on frame 72. Okay? Now if I want to make, let's play here one more time and see the speed. You say, well, I like the way it moves, but it's moving too slow. So what can we do? If we want to make it faster, okay, we have, we're going to talk about the interpolation in a minute, how these things interpolate. But for now, let's talk about timing. The moment of timing means that I am not happy the way this is timing. It's, it's too slow. I want to make it fast. Okay, so how do we do that? You have two ways of doing that here. You can actually, in here, in a graph editor, you can select all the keyframes and then move them. You press W as normal, and you press Shift, middle click and drag, and you move them in here. Frame, I don't know, 30. You can see how this line, little right line, moved to here. So now, when I play it, it's faster. You see, because now it's doing the same distance, but only and half of the time, or nearly a half of the time. Okay? It's half the time will be 36. So that's one way of doing it. Again, you do this, you can click and shift and move them, but it will be quite tricky because they can move up and down, or they can do this and like that. So you can mess everything up, you can see? So it's easier if you want to move it just on one axis, you press shift to snap it to one axis, middle click and drag, and you move them in there. And again, this is going to be even faster now, look. Okay? So another way of doing it is if you get this, if you press shift, middle click and drag, you draw this line, this sort of box around it. And this box has like a four handles. Okay? This one will allow you to move this keyframe towards the left, which is to frame lower than 72, or make it slower by moving it with this frame higher than 72. You don't have to select all of that. You can select only a little bit of a portion. You're pressing shift and middle click. The, word, the reason I make it big so I can you can see the handles like that. So you can have more keyframes and then select all of them and then move and then in one go. Again, this one will allow me. Sorry, this one will allow me. Sorry, my bad. This here in the middle allows me to shift the keys. You can see I'm shifting them from left to right. Okay. This one here will allow me to scale them. So I'm scaling them. But because there's no other keys in between, it will very much is offsetting the key to this side. Okay? And I'll show you an example in a minute when I want to sort of shift it. So you can see, I can just move it up and down whatever I want. Okay? I can go here, and then I can middle click and drag by clicking anywhere in here, and I can still offset it. Okay? So you have two options. You can either click here and move it like that. Or you can middle click and drag, and then you can shift middle click and drag on here like this. Middle click and drag, and you can move it up and down like that. And this will scale them. Okay? 
if you have several keyframes here and you scale them, then it will make them slower because they will have more time to do the same distance. Again, the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the amount. In this case, could be degrees, could be translation, or could be scaling, depending on the curves. Now, every single one of these are keyframe, and that's why you have this massive list here with all the stuff that is keyframe. But truly, the only thing that we can have, you can see you can click one of them individually and then see the curves individually on one of them. You can shift select as well all of them like this. And you know that these are all the keys that have an actual movement because the scale, you can see, stay flat. And you can analyze the value as well by selecting one. And you can see on frame one, it has the value of one. On frame one, it has scale of one. On frame 72 or 43, it has the scale of one. So it hasn't changed. Now, if you select, for example, the translate X on this keyframe here, it has a value of zero. It has translation of zero. On frame 43 or something, it has a translation of minus 46, which is translate roughly to minus 46, which is around here. So if you're working on degrees or rotation, that would be the degrees that you're rotating. Okay. So I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to put everything back the way it was. Okay, I'm going to keep it there. Okay. So, let me put it back to 72 the way it was before. Yeah, 72 here. Okay. So again, if I click in here, everything is shown. If I, I can go and individually see the channel. Or I can shift select channels that I want to see here and I work on them. Now, this curve here is the interpolation. This is the way the curves move. Okay. So I'm gonna take one, which is the translation in Y, because that's pretty much what it is. It's pretty much mostly moving on Y, but there is a little bit of translation as well in X and in Z, but let's analyze one at a time. Now, if you see this, okay, and this is very important for you to understand, guys, because this is how the, anima the animation curves work. This curve here is called the interpolation curve, or how the, inter or how the data is being interpolated, okay? There is a mathematical, um, method behind it or formula behind it that let you know how the things are going to shift or move in time. Now, if we know that the x-axis is time and the y-axis is distance, you need to go and analyze one by one. You can see here, on frame one, this guy is zero. See, frame one, zero. If you move one frame, it roughly stays the same. You can see the value here in translate y in here. Look, look at this value, translate y. You see from frame from frame uh, zero, nothing. It went up 0 0.003, 0 0.14, 0 0.32, and it keep going. There is a point that it start moving in a straight line. And then there is a point at the end here that starts sort of moving slowly again. 62, you see 62, it doesn't move quickly, okay? And that is called in animation, it's called easy in and easy out. So it means that it will have a slow start because in this many frames, it only moves a little bit of distance. And then from here, it start moving more. You can see that from this frame, 30, 31, it moved pretty much two point something units. But if you check here, for example, on frame three to point to frame four, it only moved, I don't know, let's see what was a 0.15 unit, which means that the movement here over time is very slow and the movement here over time is quite straight in a straight line. You can see that's what you call a straight line. And then here it slows down. And you can see in the internet now this day when you got these little icons that move up and down and pop and doing things like that, that's just the way it works. So that's just the way it is in the internet. And I think I can show you quickly a section here. Uh, thing is, uh, if I pull here, CCS animation, animation, uh, um, uh, I think it's this one, no, it's not that one. This one that is, you got animation curves. Is it is it out? I think it's this one. You can see here, look, the curve, how it behaves. This one here goes slow and then poof, and then slow. And then this one here, and then fast at the end. This one is slow and then fast at the end. And this one is very fast at the beginning and then 
slow at the end. You can see here that this is sort of in and out. That's why I call easy in and easy out. This one is very slow and then really fast because over time it doesn't move much. You can see this is time t and then the x is how much it moves. You can see here over this time it moves hardly anything in this section and then suddenly it shoots up and it moves a lot in a very short period of time. That's why you get it that it looks very slow at the beginning and really fast. And again, this is again the opposite. It's really fast at the beginning because it moves a lot over a very short period of time. And then at the end, it doesn't move hardly anything in here over a long period of time. And that's why you get a fast and then slow. Then this one is pretty much the one that you normally find in icons these days on the web. And this one like an overshoot, you see? This one goes negative a little bit and then shoots up and then this like a little bit of a bob, up and down. Look, it's an overshoot. And then this one is like the going up and down and then move and then this one is up and then a little bit of a bounce the same this one these are all CSS which is just pretty much the just to do the stuff animation on web pages and then here as well a little bit of a bob up and down and then this one a bob down and then up okay I recommend you have a look at this because it's quite you learn a lot how this the curve move and then this is all translatable as well into Maya Do you want to make uh, things for example move uh, in a straight line you can take in the curves and then apply one of these interpolations. By default, you have things like this. Okay, this is a straight line. You can see that now it's going to be moving. I selected all the curves. Now, when I move here to the beginning and I play it, it's even. There is no going slow or going down. So, if I undo what I just did, look at the one before. It starts a little bit slow and then it slows down at the end. That's a bit more natural. If you want to keep it. Um, a straight interpolation then you keep in a straight line and it will be no easing it will be straight okay no easing in or easing out you can make things slow as well if you select for example these curves and you can say I'm gonna make this guy really really slow so I can put these curves like this and I can put these curves like that and then you can see when I play it it will be slow at the end okay because I did, I, did, I did the curves as well, a little bit of an overshoot, that's why you get this little click as well there at the end. Okay, so... At the beginning, Maya will give you this, and then you have to play with it, okay? So if you have, for example, translate Y, and if you have this, like, I don't know, like this. Okay, so these are the points, okay, the curves. Now, if you want to manipulate this, you have to manipulate these little handles in here. You select this handle, you got this way to move this up and down with the middle click you move it up and down if you, if you do this it will give you a completely different because it's gonna go the y is gonna go up and then down you can see this look there you go okay it does what you want to do that's fine but it's a little bit of a click at the end so you want to go in y higher quicker then you can just do this and it does is it's gonna go quick on the end and then it's gonna hardly move on time on Y at the end. So you can see that when you click this, you see how it moves in Y quite quickly, but then it slowed down the Y because there was no hardly any move in Y here. During this period of time, it moved hardly anything, only a little bit of uh, information and it, and it goes up and down a little bit. That's why you get that little negative up and down. So you need to do like a little bit like that. You can go up and then very slowly goes into the one. So it's a matter of playing around with these things, okay? Uh, we are, I'm going to cover more of this when I do the actual animation. And for now, I'll just give you an introduction of what, what you're gonna need to expect for this. So um, again, if you wanna Y to go down, then you can just select this and then it's going down and then up. So you can do this and it goes down and then whoop, it goes up, okay? Because we put the Y on the negative for a bit. Okay, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. Now, this stuff here, you have the ability to individually manipulate this against this. You can do that, but you need more keyframes. So, uh, I can show you, you do that, you have to select the control, for example, this one, and then you have to break it with this button. And with that, you, then you have control over them individually. So you can do this, and then if you break them here, then you can have control over this. And you don't have to touch the other one. You can the other one will be independent because there's no keyframe, there's nothing in there. 
those are called the an the handles, the handle of the animation. So which give you the slope of the animation, the curve. Okay, so there are many ways to you know to do this. Now, um, if you want to delete a keyframe, you just right click here and you just hit delete, or you right click in here, you say delete. Okay. Now, if you want to do some manipulation, let's say around here, then you need to have a keyframe because using the handle is quite difficult because the whole curve is being manipulated. So if you want to add a keyframe here and then do something else, you just move to that point, you press S again, and you can see that a new keyframe was forming there. And you can see it here that there are some new keyframes. So if we're going back to the same, the initial um, control of translate Y, if you press as well, if you press select all of them, you press F, you frame them, the same principle. So let's say that when it goes here, it goes a little bit really high or a little bit low and then up. And you can do that. You can see that at the beginning it went up a little bit, up and then down and then up again. Okay, so you can control the way this works by adding extra keyframes. Okay. And again, if you want this going down to be a little bit of a click, you can then select this guy, break the slope, and then you can individually control them. And this will give you something different. This will be like, I'm going down, and then suddenly I'm gonna go up pretty hard with no sort of smooth, look at this. See, really fat, like a bouncing ball. That's where you get that, the bouncing ball like that, dun, dun, dun. because it, do, it, it does that for you. Because you, you say you go down there, as soon as you hit the button, you automatically go up, like this, and you go up. So if you keep it wide, like this, and you, if you want, you can make it um, wider by selecting this guy. Then you can click and drag it, I think, but I think you have to pick up. Then you click here, and then you can just, yeah. This one here, you make it straight. This one, you make it like that. Now, you can, uh, man, there's many ways of manipulating this. I'm just playing around with the curves, but you can see that every single one of those curves have a different key. Even though I have a keyframe of this, I haven't touched them. I have to go into the individual keyframe. Uh, for example, rotation, when it goes down here, for example, I want the character to be rotated like this. You can see like that. Or I can rotate it, I don't know in Y. I can rotate it like this or rotate in set. I can say, well, I wanted to have it like this very negative when it goes down and then when it goes up so when i do this and i play it see it goes down and then it goes up so i added that rotation in z okay and if you want a little bit more tweaking then you can say well i'm going to keep the actual uh wrist down more as it goes up only around here i'm going to start twisting it and then you take this rotate z you right click on rotate Z and you said add keyframe. Okay, or you said, sorry, you said key selected. Okay, so when you say uh, key selected, you're adding a keyframe only to rotate Z. And now you see I have a, another keyframe. So I want that as the character goes up and down on translate Z, I want that stuff to be still rotated like this. I just put it roughly there. So now what it happens is it goes down. It's gonna keep the rotation down for a bit. And then just at the end here, that's when it starts rotating back to the position, you see? Okay? And then it can get really, really, really complicated and it can start adding a lot, a lot of detail to your animation. Okay? So please try to um, Finish your character as soon as possible. We need to start doing animation, and for this, animation is quite time consuming, guys. And you need to um, start working on that as soon as possible. Um, I told you many times to have your rig as soon as possible ready so you can actually do it because you cannot do animation with other rig. You should you should have to do it with yours. Okay, so that's that. Um, if you wanna change the way this behave, this curve, there are many ways. You can just uh, select all the control and then you can have this, which gives you this sort of smooth transition. This is another way of, you see, of interpolating. So the animation will look slightly different. Okay. 
Uh, there's another one like this, which is, I don't know why it does. This is the line. You can see that everything will be a straight line. So you will see that everything it looks very clicky and not very organic. So uh, this is just uh, as it comes, smooth, flat. This is interesting because this is uh, what is called um, plateau, or it's called a step line. And this is how the guys, when the guys do animation for uh, stop motion, this is how they do stop motion in 3D. Like that. That's how they do stop motion. You get the curves, and then the curves, they don't have any any uh, movement. They just have movement on the end points. Okay? And that's how you get the stop motion working like this in 3D. Um, there is no motion blur. There's no nice, smooth in between interpolation. There is only whatever the point is from A to B, starts there, starts there, and then automatically go back to the other one so there's nothing so you could have an animation that you already had and then you can just actually turn it into um, um, into uh, um, stop motion by doing this and this is how they did the animation guys in uh, the latest spider-man the latest spider-man is all animated in in, in uh, maya uh, the, the welcome to the spider-verse is done like that and then what it done is for every frame you will have an extra frame next to it just to give you a little bit of a hold up and then you move to another keyframe and that's how you get that sort of jittery look like it's being done by hand but it's not it's just done by this and then you just make it look uh, stop motion like animation and that's just a technique to do that okay but obviously it's not as simple as just putting keyframes in there it's just it's, it has a more uh, design behind it I think you can find a, a uh, some sort of um, let's see if I can find something here for you so So something I can remember what it was. Uh, this was just really cool to see slows down. I think they, yeah, they, uh, well, on YouTube, there's something in there that tells you about I cannot find it at the moment, but I saw um, a uh, sort of um, behind the scenes of that, and it tells you how they did the, uh, the animation uh, design. And the animation is pretty much based on stop motion by adding keyframes at the beginning or at the end of each normal frame of animation. So, yeah, that's just uh, something for you to have a look if you want to. But yeah, pretty much the principle is there. You just move there and then, obviously the moment is too much, but it's just like that and then goes up. And you can see that the, the, the motion is completely different. If you have something like, like this, for example, you can see that this behaves completely different because there's a little bit of interpolation in between. And this curve will dictate how the interpolation happens. So, okay. And again, the timing of this, if you think that this is too big, then you can just shift click select all of this and then you can scale them down like this look and now the animation happens in this in a shorter period of time which at the same time makes it really fast or it too fast okay so it's going to be a lot of shifting back and forward and like i said sorry like i said it can get really complicated and i'm going to give you an example of an animation here which one of the finals so i'm going to put the final run i'm going to say this And then if I, yeah, if you select here the um, controls, uh, if I get the uh, UI, select all the controls, you can see, look, it gets really complicated. And this is a looping thing, so you can get the loop and you can just see that uh, this is what you have to do, guys. This loop, and then you're only going to take a chunk of the loop, and this is what you're going to export into Unreal. Uh, this is one, and I think this is probably one of the, the most, I don't know if that's one of the more complicated, but um, if I show you the jump final the jump final is probably a little bit complicated so it's actually all there you can see that this is uh is 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 uh, broken down in in the initial the loop in the air and the landing so you have to break it in three okay 
So you can see that it, it can get quite complicated. And this is just, this is fairly easy. I, if I show you one of the projects that I've done in the past, it's, uh, it can get really, especially when you got things like animation, facial animation. Oh my God, it's, 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 it's tons and tons of work. So this is nothing. This is pretty simple, pretty much. It's just the actual body mechanics. When you start acting and things like that, then yes, that's when it gets a bit uh, tricky. So let me show you one more, which is the final, the walk final. And again, you see, you can get why something. And this is just the control, the control, for example, there. I and mean, this is the animation of the arm. This is the animation of the other one, which is the opposite. You got the animation of this, which is the leg. This is when the leg goes up and down. This is when it goes up here, for example. You can see this is, the, this is rotation. And the translation in this will be the translation in Y. Is this, this is when the legs go up. If you think, okay, the legs is too low, then you can just select this curve and then move it up. And that's how you, that's how you do it. Okay, this go up like this. And say, well, this is too flat in here. Then you can just move it up. And then that will be going up in an arc and then up and then down. You see, so yeah, there is a lot of um, going on, and I think what we're going to be doing is we want to create at the beginning just a simple keyframes, then we're going to scale them, and then we're going to make copies of this, and then we're going to offset the keys. By meeting what I mean by offsetting the keys is that I'm not going to make I'm going to make sure that everything doesn't happen at the same time because that's the key to selling this. If you have everything happening at the same time, nothing happens at the same time. Which means that if, when you move your leg, the arm doesn't move at the same time. It's going to be a bit of a delay, right? You can move two frames before or two frames after, and then when you put all that together, then you start making it look making it look like it's really fluid and 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 nice and smooth. So that is something that um, it has to um, uh, you have to um, offset the keys and copy them and do that. Okay. But again, this is just an example. Uh, the stuff that we're going to be covering next week, we're going to start with the idle, and then the idle will set the ground, uh, the grounding for continuing doing the rest of the animation, guys. Okay. So that's it for now, guys. I think I'm going to leave it here, and then next week we're going to start the animation, the idle, and the walk cycle. I'm going to tell you how to start doing it and putting it together, and you should be able to have enough information to start working on yours. Now uh, there is a lot of work, guys, to be done, and I don't. I need to see your work now. So I think um, I'm going to have to go and move into the help room. And, and I'm going to start seeing you one by one, whoever wants to stay. And then I'll take it from there, okay? Any questions, guys, about this so far? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah, loads of them. <laughs> uh, don't know where to start, but yeah, I'll have to rewatch everything. Yeah, well, this is uh, the the good thing is this is all being recorded, so you can go back to this. Yeah, uh, yeah, love it. Yeah, so just you you uh, yeah, just 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 go through this again, but um, yeah, if I did that, it's time consuming, guys, and it's time consuming. Sorry, it's time consuming, and then you just have to sit down and do it. Um, there is no uh, no bypassing of this, guys. It is animation. Let me show you one example here quickly. I think it's. Um, This is nothing. This is um, this is this is normally a, a shot from um, from a film. Have you seen the Ice Age? So and this film is fairly old now, but if you this is probably low rest. You can see this is a, a sort of breakdown of the blocking and the polishing of the animation. And this took about this shot took about a month to do. You can see you start day one. You start like only with the camera movement, and it's very simple, just the camera. Then you start getting the sort of key poses, okay? So you can get the timing correct and the and the weight. And then day three you start breaking out and then getting smoother and smoother. Day six, day seven, ten. And it start getting nice. This is only day six. We start like splitting, splitting things, like smoothing the curves. Those curves that I'm showing you. And this 20 days later, that's five weeks, six, seven weeks. 
And this is obviously something you do something one day and then automatically goes and gets reviewed. So, and this is took 33 days, but obviously working as a professional animators, and this is um, this time consuming, guys. This time consuming. So, um, even doing the stuff we're going to be doing is fairly simple, but it's going to still take some time, guys, to get it out. For example, like the, the rule of thumb in Pixar, Pixar, Pixar animators, they animators and. They assign them shot per team, like two, three, four animators, and they cannot produce more than two, three seconds per week of animation. So that's just animation, guys. I'm not talking about modeling, I'm not talking about shading, I'm not talking about the effects, I'm not talking about lighting, I'm not talking about any of that stuff. Just the animation. They, don't, they cannot produce more than a second or two a week. And that's a team of two, three animators that are in shot of one shot, for example. So, yeah. Animation is very time consuming, so don't leave it till the end is my point. Okay, so any questions? Any other questions? Anything? Before we move on into the help room, to have a look at your stuff, you wanna have a look? You want me to have a look? None from me, thank you. Alright, cool. So I'm gonna move into there. So I'm gonna stop the uh, I'm gonna stop the recording here.